Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Again, I say thank you, Jesus. I am Bishop D.R. Hunt, and I greet you today in the mighty, in the matchless name of Jesus, declaring unto you that I am still in love with Jesus. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. He is the Lord of my life. My prayer today for you is that you're in love with Jesus, that Jesus is also your Lord, that would make Jesus be our Lord. Jesus is Lord. <clears throat> Jesus is Lord. I pray you're glad about it. He is the absolute best thing that ever happened to me on today. But listen, I want you, I am so glad that he's given us this opportunity that we might be together again. The Bible said, come, let us reason together, say the Lord, though our sins be as scarlet, he'll make them as white as snow. That I come here today to reason with you that there is nobody like Jesus, that he is still the best thing and he is still sweet, I know. Um, if you were, I want to be as brief as the Holy Ghost would allow, that you know that this uh, this time and this season, what we're doing is we're trying to take it to the next level. And so therefore we have to be real on where we at. You can't uh, get to floor uh, three if you're not real about being on floor two because you don't know where you need to move next. So we are being real and we're being transparent about where we are so that Jesus can work on us. We're making, uh, we're putting those things in the way so he can fix them for us. And that's what we need here today. Um, I want you, if you would, uh, I want to be quick, uh, brief as I came with this and I encourage you all um, to not only to like and share, but listen, I want you to take some notes so that you can read this and meditate in your own, uh, in your meditation time. You can go back over this because uh, uh, let God word be true and every man a lie. And so that's where we want to be here today. Um, if you would uh, open your Bibles, I'll be reading out of the King James Version and let me, <clears throat> let me get there myself. Um, uh, open your Bibles, uh, uh, Old Testament, Second Chronicles, uh, chapter number one. <clears throat> Second Chronicles chapter number one, and I'll, and I'll do, um, uh, I'm going to throw some scriptures at you today, and I'm going to try to do a little bit of uh, a reading. I'll read quickly. Like I said, again, you can go over it again later, uh, but I'll read quickly. Uh, just uh, if you were, if you are taking notes, try to take note of the scripture. <clears throat> uh, Second Chronicles uh, chapter number one, verse number seven through verse number 12, the Bible reads, uh, in that night, God, uh, in that night, did God appear unto Solomon and ask and said unto him, ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said unto God, thou hast showed great mercy unto David, my father, and has made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David, my father, be established, for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I might go out and come in before this people for who can judge this thy people that is so great. And God said to Solomon, uh, because this was in thine heart, because thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, uh, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hast thou asked long life, but has asked wisdom and knowledge that for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people over whom I've made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had uh, that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. Uh, thank you, Jesus. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I want to talk about um, wisdom uh, to deal with people. And so um, um, in Second Chronicles, we read about Solomon, who... Uh, <clears throat> who is known historically in the Bible as the wisest king or even the wisest man ever lived. But uh, si uh, Solomon uh, here, uh, when asking uh, or petitioning God for the thing that he would need the most in order to be able to navigate, he said, what I want, I don't want the money. I'm not looking for more gold. I'm not looking for you to destroy my enemy. I'm not looking for you to increase, uh, to increase my kingdom. What I need is wisdom to be able to handle uh, the people the right way. Um, 
people of Jesus, what we have to understand is that we're called, and I, and I want to go through just enough scripture so that you'll understand that this is our calling, this is our mandate, that we need to have enough wisdom to be able to operate, to be able to deal with the people. And um, we have oftentimes found ourselves lacking uh, operational wisdom uh, uh, because that uh, wisdom is the, the application of knowledge. So when you have application of wisdom, when you're able to live in wisdom, Jesus said wisdom is justified by her, by their children, by her children, uh, by their behavior, by the way they operate. You'll know them by how they operate. And so here you'll find uh, that what we have is, is that we have, um, it's sometimes difficult dealing with people. Um, so if we were to be transparent, the real problem is not our God, the real problem is not the church. The real problem is that everywhere you go, there's some people you gotta deal with. You gotta deal with the people at church. You gotta deal with the people on the job. You gotta deal with the people at home. Everywhere you go, there's some people and people bring difficulty uh, because uh, people calls for you to have to navigate through uh, wisely because people don't just do what you want or act how you want or simply comply uh, with your wishes. And that's been the problem with ministry for so long. We have a problem with ministry. Here's what the problem with ministry is. I'm going to break it down for you. The problem is, is that we have a problem ministering to someone who we don't agree with. We have a problem with ministering with people who don't identify uh, with the things that we identify with. And that's not what we're called to do. And so if our love is to be without dissimulation, if we're supposed to love like God has ordained us to love, if we're supposed to operate in Jesus' love, that means that means that we have to be able to love people who we don't agree with. We have to be able to love people who are difficult to deal with. And he understood, Solomon understood, I'm going to have to deal with some people sometimes and it's going to be difficult for me. So I want to be real and transparent and tell you today that's a struggle. And so we want to deal with the struggle because if we don't deal with the struggle, we can't get better. Sometimes even the ones who you say you love, they are difficult. It is hard dealing with people, handling people properly, because if they're mad, you want to get mad. If they're angry, you want to be angry. If they cussing, you might start cussing. And if they fighting, oh man, there's going to be a fight today. And so because we have these natural issues to deal with in the struggle that we have in dealing with people, we want to confront them head on. Um, go now to Matthew uh, uh, Matthew, the 25th chapter. Now listen, on Matthew, the 25th chapter, uh, I, I want to read, I'm going to read first starting from verse 14 to verse 30. <clears throat> like I said, I'll read it very quickly. Matthew, the 25th chapter, and I want to read um, verse 14 through 30. Um, um, but then uh, don't worry, because I'm, I'm, I'm coming back. Let's see. Uh, all right. Matthew, the 25th chapter, verse 14 through verse 30. And I won't give you a whole lot of, um, um, I won't give you a whole lot of additional notes because I'm going to give you a whole lot of scripture. Uh, Matthew 25, um, verse 14 through 30. And listen, here uh, the Bible reads, you'll notice that all these words I'm about to read, every single last word is in red. That means Jesus said, so Matthew 25, uh, verses 14 uh, through verse uh, number 30. Um, and Jesus said, for the kingdom of heaven is, a, is as a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants uh, and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one of them, he gave five talents and to another two and to another one, uh, to everyone, every man, according to his several ability, he straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded him with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received the two talents, he also gained, uh, he also gained other two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid the Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of, the, of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so uh, he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Uh, his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee rule over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. 
He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou hast delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained thee other talents beside them. Uh, his Lord said unto him, well done, thou good, faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Thou will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Verse 24, then he which had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew uh, the, uh, that thou art a hard man reaping uh, where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not straw. I was and I was afraid and I went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. Uh, his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not straw. Thou oughtest therefore to have put uh, my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Uh, take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that have not shall be taken away, even that which he hath. I pray you're hearing right there. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Now we read that all that, and Jesus says this is the parable. Uh, he said, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you what the kingdom is like unto it's like a man uh, uh, going to a journey and giving his servants talents according to their ability and listen to what he asked for them to do. He's uh, and, and, and I never really I never really uh, dug as deep into this uh, parable as I did uh, currently. But uh, but listen to this. Uh, the whole thing was he had to, they had to deal with the people. It wasn't about the talent. They already had the talent. Uh, uh, the, the Lord gave it to them. They already received it. So when he reckoned with them, he didn't reckon or he didn't have them to give an account of what he gave them. He had them to give an account of what they did with what he gave them and what their mission was. Uh, they were supposed to occupy. They were supposed to deal with the people, literal dealing, literal exchanging. And the one who had five said, I took the five and I worked with it and I dealt with the people and now I have 10. The one who had two said, I took the two and I worked with it and now I have four. But in order for them to do what the Lord had appointed them to do. They had to deal with the people. He said, I demanded usury. He even told the servant who had the one talent, why didn't you not take my money to the exchangers? You're supposed to exchange it with the people. You're supposed to handle it and deal with the people, but instead you dug it in the earth and gave me back the same thing I gave you. Slothful, unprofitable. This brings pause for me, this brings issue for me because we oftentimes think that we can do what the Lord has called us to do, what Jesus has appointed us to do and not deal with people. My friend, you are sorely mistaken. You are absolutely wrong. Even though we already stated people are difficult, people can be hard and hard headed. However, that is your assignment. And so he told them, here's what I do. According to your ability, I'm giving you these talents and I'm issuing you an assignment. Go out and deal with the people. He even told the servant who came with the same one talent that he gave him, he said, didn't you know I demand an increase? Didn't you know I demand usury? I didn't demand that you have the gift, hold the gift and keep the gift, but I demanded that you use the gift. That's what he said. I demanded usury of uh, first Peter four and 10 as every man hath received the gift. Even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. It's in the mandate. It's in the mandate. First Peter four and 10 It's in the mandate. We're called to do it. We're called to operate that way It is an exchange. We're supposed to give you this good God that we have. We're supposed to put this Jesus on you, even though uh, even though none of us qualify, even though none of us deserve it. And if we don't know how to operate with the Jesus that we have to be able to operate in the presence of whatever you have, uh, because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So therefore we have to be able to operate uh, even in the presence of what, um, what seems to be um, not pleasant for you, uh, what seems to be upsetting to you, bothersome to you. Uh, when people uh, don't like you and don't agree with you and don't, uh, and don't make it easy for you to deal with them. Jesus said, if you only love those who love you, what reward is it in that? 
but you're supposed to pray for them and bless them that hate you. Do good to them that despitefully misuse you. I'm still in the Bible, y'all. I'm telling you that the reason that we have this uh, so many issues is because we want to forget our basic, uh, our basic principle of living. And our basic principle of living is we have to operate like Jesus said, operate. First John 4 and 17, as he is, so are we in this world. So if we don't operate when dealing with people with wisdom, uh, you'll find um, that what we'll do is we'll continue to have excuse. Uh, you know the story about the Samaritan, um, uh, the good Samaritan, uh, here's what happened. There was a man, the Bible said, uh, 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 he fell amongst thieves, uh, and there, falling amongst thieves, um, the priest passed him by, the Pharisee passed him by, I mean, the Levite passed him by, and here it is uh, that uh, uh, this man who uh, the Bible just called a Samaritan, a foreigner, and he sees the man, and he's moved with compassion, and he uh, binds up the man's wounds and put the man on his mule and takes the man to the inn and puts the man in the inn and then said, whatever he owes, I'll pay. Because when dealing with people, you find out something in that story that is critical. Uh, there's no background story to the man who fell amongst the, all I know is he was, he got messed up and he needed somebody who knew how to operate to be able to handle him. And so even though the people looked all religious and acted all holy, they didn't know how to handle real people. And real people, listen to this, y'all, they got real problems. They got some real issues. They fall on real hard times. They deal with some real hard stuff. And as long as you keep stepping over and walking over on your way to church, you're missing your principal mandate. You're missing, uh, you're missing the first thing. You're missing your love of Jesus. And that means if you love him, you have to love love is sheep. It's your mission. It's your job. It's how we operate. And so what we do is, is we hide our talent in the earth. And that's where I want to, I want to get this correlation to you, uh, to uh, the actual, um, uh, the actual physical thing that the servant with one talent did. And so he would have been the one who seen the man in need, but instead took his talent or uh, the grace that our God has given us, this grace of Jesus, the blood that covers you and keeps you from day to day. Uh, he took it and he hid it. So he act like he didn't even know him. On his way to church and act like he don't even know who Jesus is. Sitting in the pew, singing with the choir and acting like he don't even know who Jesus is. And so that's what he did. And that's what we have to, we have to be mindful to guard ourselves against doing. Otherwise we'll do the same thing. Otherwise we'll operate the same way. Uh, Galatians six and two, bear ye one of the burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. It's how we are supposed to operate. But listen to this. Um, Luke 9 and 23, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. That's what Jesus said. Uh, uh, but I, the reason why we wanted to highlight Luke 9 and 23 is because it's daily. And so the man uh, who had the one talent, uh, he didn't just start, uh, he didn't just on the day the Lord uh, asked for him to give an account of his usury. That's not the day he stopped operating and stopped dealing with people. He'd been doing it every day. And so if you're going to do what Jesus has called you to do, if you're going to operate uh, and deal with people the way he said, with wisdom, you're going to have to be able to do it uh, daily. So Jesus said, in order, if any man come after me, let him deny himself. I know you got some problems and you got some issues, but our God is just greater. Uh, and let him deny himself, uh, take up his cross uh, and follow after me. But listen to this, he has to take up his cross daily. It's an everyday thing. You got to deal with people every single day. That's what's on his cross. The devil wasn't on the cross. Uh, Jesus didn't carry the devil to the cross. He didn't carry, um, he didn't carry angels to the cross. Uh, uh, what he carried to the cross was the sins of the world. There was flesh on that cross. Oh, my Jesus. Oh, I know I'm preaching now. And so because Jesus took flesh to the cross, that means everyone has to then 
take up their cross and follow after him. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, if you want to be where Jesus is, if you want to be and live for Jesus, here's what you got to do. You have to deal with people. There is no way around it. And if you're going to be able to deal with them, you know how you are. You know you got an attitude. You're going to have to learn how to operate in wisdom. James said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God and give it to all men liberally and refuses to take it back. So sometimes I'm not saying that you know how to deal with everybody. Sometimes people just downright get on your nerves, but greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Jesus will give you the wisdom to learn how to operate with people. That's what Solomon said. I need the wisdom to know how to operate. And so and so the one, uh, the servant who had five talents, uh, he was not operating in any greater grace uh, than the servant who had one talent. He just said, listen, I'm going to take what Jesus gave me and I'm going to do what Jesus said. That's what, I'm, uh, that's what I'm encouraging you to do today. We're trying to get to the next level. All I'm asking for you to do is this one thing. Take what Jesus gave you and do what Jesus said. That's it. Take what he gave you and do what he said. Jesus said, bear you one of the burden. Or the Bible said, bear you one of the burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? The law of Christ is Jesus said, you, a, a new law I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. This is the law of Christ. And so he said, when you bear one of the burdens, uh, this is the same Paul writes to Galatian, uh, Church of Galatia and tells them, uh, if you see your brother overcoming a fault, you which is spiritual, uh, restore such a one. And so now we know that if you bear one of the burdens, that's how you fulfill the law of Christ. That's how you operate in wisdom, in dealing with people, because it's not for you to try to fix people or change people. You're just called to bear the weight of people. Jesus did not try to fix you while he bore your sins on the cross. Let me clarify, while you were yet in sin in due time Christ died for the ungodly, he had to bear the weight of you while you were still messed up. He had the bare weight of you while you weren't living right, talking right, praying right, or acting right. And Jesus still loved you. And Jesus said, if you're going to come after him, you got to operate the same way in dealing with people. You're going to have to love them and forbear them in order to be able to minister to them. And you can't help anybody who you don't love. And if we do operate that way, absent the love, uh, then we become a sound and brass and tinkle and simple. Paul said, we ain't doing nothing but going through the motion. Jesus said, uh, outside white sepulchers, inside dead man's bones. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let me, uh, let me continue right here. And so as we receive the gift, we're supposed to minister it as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. That's what we're called to operate in. That's what we're supposed to do. Uh, so listen to this though. Let me go, uh, go now to Matthew. Uh, I'm back in Matthew 25. I'm back in Matthew 25. And now I want to jump right back on, uh, right where we left off. And um, I want to start reading at um, verse 31. Um, verse 31, uh, and I'll finish up the rest of that chapter uh, very quickly. When the Son of Man shall come in its glory uh, and all the holy angel with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all the nations and he shall separate them one from another as the shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Y'all hearing me right here. Um, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left. And then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father and hear the kingdom of prayer for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and ye took me in. Naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee at hunger and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in? are naked and clothed thee. I'm in verse 39. Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee. And then Jesus said in, in verse 40, and the king shall answer and say unto them, verily I say unto you, 
inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall they say also unto him on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed in everlasting fire, uh, prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was at hunger and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger and ye took me not in naked and ye clothed me not sick and in prison and ye visited me not. Then shall they say, uh, then shall they also answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee uh, hungered or thirst or stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee? Look at that right there and did not minister unto thee. Uh, and then shall he answer them saying, verily I say unto you, and as much as you done it unto one of the least of these, you did it not to me. Uh, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous uh, into a life eternal. Listen, my friend, it, can't, it cannot get uh, any simpler than this. So then Jesus says that when he comes back in the glory, he'll separate the kingdom uh, just like a, a farmer does or a sheep from goat. And, and, and he, uh, it, it'll be a simple process because be, uh, there won't be any discernment involved. He said, it'll be exactly based on how you handle the people. The whole thing is based on how you dealt with the people. He said, I was hungry and you, uh, and you clothed me. I was naked, I'm naked and you clothed me, hungry and you fed me. He said all these things. And they said, Jesus, when, when did we do these things? And he said, so much you've done it to the least of these. You've done it also to me. You got to, if, if I, I wanted to give you enough enough scripture to be able to work with this thing to understand a change is necessary in the way we deal with the people. Forget that we ought to even just prefer one another. Forget just dealing with Jesus people. I mean, just people in general, we operate outside of wisdom and it cannot continue to be okay. So what people don't always uh, say the same things or act the same way. Jesus uh, on, uh, on, a, uh, on that old rugged cross, on a hill called Calvary. The Bible said they deriled him, uh, they cussed him, uh, they mocked him. Jesus looked down off the cross and said these precious words, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I'm praying for that kind of wisdom to be able to deal with people because sometimes people deal st deal, do stuff uh, to you that you just can't wrap your mind around. They hurt you so bad you cannot even uh, figure out where to begin in the process of trying to deal with them. So Jesus then gives you the outlet of how sometimes you don't have to learn how to deal with them as much as you need to learn how to forgive them. You need to learn how to release them because once you release them, then you understand there's greater waiting for you. Once you operate with, operate, uh, dealing with them uh, in wisdom, uh, that's when things change. Because on the other side of the cross, listen to this, y'all, is the glory. All right, so now uh, uh, here's what you got to know. So, so if it is that we're, it's, if it's if it's that simple, if that's really what we're talking about, I mean, if it's that simple, and all and all we had to do, all we got to do is operate with the people in wisdom. Uh, that's uh, uh, that seems like, what, um, well, what I'm trying to get at is if it's so easy, why aren't we doing it? I'll tell you why. Because the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. It's hard to operate and deal with people when you are people. Meaning you got feelings, you got emotions, you got all kind of other stuff that makes it hard to deal with people. Sometimes people say things and it pulls you in a certain way. And it makes you mad and makes you upset. But I'm asking you that in order for you to really be able to deal with people, in order to really uh, follow after Jesus, you have to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it means. You got to put him on and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. That means uh, uh, you are still going to be you, but greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. It's not going to be a change that happens that you never going to be who you are. You are who you are, but you have to, in, in order to follow after Jesus, you have to deny yourself. 
You think if somebody was to slap you on the cheek, you think turning the cheek means that somehow uh, there's no pain in the slap. The pain is still there. It means you deny the response and the response change because you're looking for a greater outcome, because you're looking for greater glory, because you need Jesus to be lifted up. And that's what I'm trying to get you to see. We can't keep acting like this somehow, that somehow people aren't people. People are people, but our God is greater. And so we need to have a different response. Are you with me right there? I'm going to amen myself. We got to have a different response. And when we have a different response, it's not people that get the glory. It's not flesh that get the glory. It's Jesus that get the glory. When the response is one that can come only from the almighty God, that's when he gets his glory. And Paul said, Christ will be glorified in my body whether it be by life or death. Uh, and since I'm quoting Paul, let me quote him one more time. From henceforth, let no man trouble me. For in my body, I bear the marks of the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. That means you ain't, uh, you can't talk about me enough. You can't make me mad enough. You can't irritate me enough to make me stop loving you. I'm on a mission. And Jesus has given me enough grace and enough, uh, uh, and, and, and enough anointing to be able to handle you. The spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to be able to deal with some people that got some issues. All right, now, I don't, uh, I, I don't want to get too far off from where I'm going, but I got to tell you this. Uh, if ever people are going to know Jesus is real in you, it's going to be based on the way you handle them, not off the scripture, scriptures that you quote. It's going to be based on how you deal with them. Do you know how I know the love of Jesus is really real? Somebody showed me. And that's when I found out. They showed me and I tried Jesus for myself. And I found out then that nothing, no one can do me like Jesus can. Uh, first John, and, and, and just so we have a little more evidence, I'm sorry, not first John, just John, St. John, chapter number 21, and let me find my place, verses 14 through verse number 17. Listen, we need enough wisdom to be able to deal with people like Jesus deals with people. And so when we try to operate in a ministry that is independent of dealing with people, we cannot be doing what Jesus told us to do. Listen to this. Um, in uh, St. John 21, uh, verse number 14 through 17, I'll read this and I'm done. Um, uh, this is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to the disciples after that he was risen from the dead. So when they dying, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, a son of Jonas, lovest thou me uh, more than these? He said unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. He said unto him, feed my lambs. And uh, verse 16, he said unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Uh, he said unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, feed my sheep. In verse 17, he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Listen, you can keep talking about how much you love Jesus, but there is a necessity. Uh, that you give people the same Jesus that Jesus gave you, that you operate in that same grace, that you operate in that same spirit. That he, uh, uh, that Peter, just like us sometimes think that we can have ministry without dealing with people. And so he says the same thing that you and I often say, yes, I love Jesus. Jesus says to him, if you do love me, then feed my sheep. If you do love me, then give them what I gave you. If you do love me, then show that love to somebody else. If you love me, you'll feed my sheep. And so Peter got mad uh, because he understood just like we understand. Yes, 
We love Jesus. Absolutely. Don't you love him? I know I love him. I believe you love him. And when you say it, you're being sincere and truthful. However, Jesus said your love is not expressed in words. It's in the operation. So he said, don't you love me more than these? Uh, Peter said, I love you. Uh, he asked Peter again, do you love me? Don't you love me? And Peter said, you, I love you. He asked Peter again, don't you love Peter said, Peter, uh, Peter got angry because he said, Jesus, you know I love you. You know all things. You know I love you. He said, if you love me, why aren't you operate? If you love me, why aren't you operating in wisdom and dealing with the people? Why aren't you showing the people that you have interaction with just how much you love me? by loving them. Why aren't you operating in that grace? Well, listen, my friend, I don't have any more time, but I want you to understand if ever you were going to live for Jesus, now would be the time if ever you want to operate in wisdom and dealing with people. Now would be the time if ever you were going to operate <clears throat> under this grace, under this anointing. Now would be the time because it truly is Jesus time and Jesus time is a good time. We're taking it to the next level. We won't stop. We will not be hindered. We will not be detoured. Jesus will be glorified. Are you with me on that? Oh, I know you are. I believe it. I feel it in my spirit. Uh, everything is already all right. Listen, I want to give you this, <clears throat> this last call. This call for salvation and let you know that Jesus is still in the saving business. He's still able to cover you. He doesn't need for you to be holy or righteous. You already qualify. All you have to do is be tired and he'll give you rest. I want to give you this last call. Uh, this call for salvation confessed to you that Jesus had come down the flesh over 2,000 years ago. He suffered, bled, died on the cross, he went down the grave, stayed there three days and three nights. On the third day, Jesus rose again with all power in heaven and in earth. If you believe that with all of your heart, repent of your sins, confess with your mouth that Jesus he did rise again, you shall be saved. The Bible said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If ever you needed Jesus, you need him right now. The door of salvation is open unto you. Um, I'm asking that all you got to do is just give Jesus a try. All you got to do is try him for yourself. And I want to confess to you that he's the absolute best thing that ever happened to me. I've met nothing. I've met no one or nothing that can do me like Jesus can. He is my all in all. Um, if you have made Jesus your choice today, if you let Jesus into your heart on today, or if you just want to share the good news of Jesus uh, with us, I want you to reach out to us at coj1.org. Again, that's coj1.org. And you can reach out to us and just let us know uh, if you want to reconfirm your commitment with Jesus. If you want to say, I lost my way, but now I'm back. Jesus, give me one more chance. All oh, today would be a good day for one more chance. Wouldn't it be? His grace is sufficient. His strength made perfect in your weakness. He knows what you have need of. All you got to do is just try Jesus for yourself. All the believers that are watching me today, I want you to agree with me in faith. I want us to agree together that Jesus is still moving, that he cannot fail, that he has all power in his hands, that he, uh, that his word cannot and will not come back to him void, but it'll prosper in that which it was sent. And that someone today needs to know that Jesus is their deliverer. They're going through a hard time. They got some troubles and troubled people do troubling things, but we believe that Jesus, he's the answer. We believe that he knows exactly what they have need of. I want you to agree with me in faith and pray with me today that, that even right now, help is on the way that Jesus is moving in a direction that he's lifting up somebody's bow down the head, that he's restoring somebody's joy, that he's giving them strength right now. He's breaking that yoke uh, off their life, that somebody's being delivered and set free this hour, uh, this moment, right now, today, in the name of Jesus. I want you to remain, agree with me in faith that Jesus is still the healer. Uh, there is no sickness or disease that he cannot cure. He has paid the price to be the healer. Therefore, today, I want us to bring him every pain, every suffering, every heartache, every, uh, every schism in the body, every disease, everything that's been named, everything that has not been named. There are some people even right now that have uh, things in their body that are so hurtful, uh, they, they, uh, they just don't know what they're going to do, but we believe that Jesus, he is the bomb, that he's the cure, that he's the answer. That is, uh, that even right now, we plead the blood of Jesus over every sickness, infirmity, and pain. We believe that right now, somebody, a uh, body is conforming to his will, that somebody, body is reforming to his word, that somebody's being healed, that somebody's being made whole, that somebody's getting out of their uh, bed of affliction. They're getting off of that emergency room table. They're getting off of that operating table, and they're being made whole today, right now, in the name of Jesus. I want you to believe with me um, that his arms are not start shortened, that he cannot save, that Jesus can save anybody, that he specializes in those things which we call impossible, and he can do what no other power is able to do. 
There's someone today who need Jesus right now. Uh, uh, they're not looking for him, but they need him. Uh, I want you to believe with me today for visitation that even right now uh, that he's showing up uh, in somebody's life. He's showing up in somebody's circumstance. They're having visitation with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They're being baptized in the blood of the Lamb. Their sins are being washed. Uh, their transgressions are being forgiven. Their iniquities are being blotted out. They're putting Jesus on right now. They're falling in love with Jesus. They're declaring that Jesus, he's the best thing that ever happened in my life. If you believe me today that Jesus is healing and he's saving and he's delivering and he's doing it right now. I want you just to shout wherever you are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's been so good to me. I believe and I pray that he's also been good to you. Um, if you were, uh, it is giving time. Uh, if uh, if it is that you have a heart to give, um, now would be the time. Jesus' time is a good time. Uh, I want to encourage you uh, to not give grudgingly nor in necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. As you purpose in, as a man purpose in his heart, so let him give. And I'm asking that you uh, might find it in your heart to um, to give according as is pleasing unto our God. And so uh, if you were and you're able to give, um, and you're able to give electronically, you can go over to coj1.org. There you'll find access and avenues for you to be able to give electronically. That's again, that's coj1.org. And you will be able to access electronically uh, giving that way. If you um, uh, would like to give traditionally, uh, you can mail in your offering if you so choose to do so at 2356 North Station Street uh, in Indianapolis, Indiana, 46218. Again, that address is uh, 2356 North Station Street, 46218, Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, if you would like to, um, if you would like to have us to uh, uh, make accommodations that we might uh, uh, that we might receive the offering from you that is in your heart to give, then if you would reach out to us again at coj1.org, coj1.org, and there uh, we can make accommodations for you. Just if you um, reach out to me, I promise I will reach back out to you. Um, and I thank Jesus for just this grace that he's given us that he might have one more chance and one more day just to be here together. Those of you who know, we also are pressing toward the mark. We are, uh, we're reaching out. This is our, uh, this is our giving season. We're planting seed even right now. Um, I'm asking all, and I know that a lot of you have participated, and I thank Jesus for you, those who have participated, those who are planning on participating, those who are praying about participating, I thank Jesus for you. Remember, you are helping to make it happen. Jesus is so very good to us, but listen, if you have a heart to do so, I'm asking that uh, each one of you uh, that is able give $1,000 or the best that you can. Um, um, I'm asking that you prayerfully consider doing so. And I'm not even asking that you just do it, pray about it, because I know who my God is and I know what he's able to do. And he has not failed me yet. And so um, uh, and uh, prayerfully consider uh, giving that offering and, uh, and uh, joining in with us on this mission that we might do what Jesus has purpose for us to do. And I believe that in all things, he will be glorified. Um, also, um, Soon and very soon, I want to get together with you in person. We're moving toward that. I'm working some things. And so uh, if you have not liked, shared, or if you have not um, uh, subscribed, please subscribe so that we can uh, have your information. Therefore, I can reach out to you and let you know when something moves quickly so you will be in the know and not outside of the know. Um, and so I thank Jesus for that. Um, I want you to know that this Jesus has been such a blessing to uh, that whatever it is that you've been going through, whatever it is that you feel like uh, is trying to destroy you, I want you to know that you have survived because of his grace and his mercy. Jesus has been good to you. Jesus has been good to you. Uh, I, um, I love you in Jesus' name, but Jesus, he loves you best. And remember, you don't have to worry about tomorrow because Jesus is with you today. I'm praying that even on today, that Jesus cover you in all things, keep you through everything and bless you like you've never been blessed before. I know he's already doing it. I know he's more than able. Jesus is good. Jesus is good. Yes, he is. You have a beautiful day in Jesus.